going on you guys tbr here back yet again with another king of fighters all-star video and in today's video we're going to be talking about the ex volume 6 update otherwise known as the halloween 2022 update there was a lot to come along with this update and while we've already covered the banners and whether or not you should be summoning on those which if you would like to see that video and have not yet link will be in the description we still have yet to talk about all of the events and there's quite a few like i said so we're just going to jump right into it but before we go ahead and get into all of that more make sure you guys smash that like button and subscribe and of course happy saturday to all of you and welcome to the saturday chat and chill so let's just go ahead and jump right into the update right so there's a lot to talk about here and i figure i'm just going to go over the things that are kind of the most interesting to me because there's a lot of stuff that's going on here that's a little bit different from what we normally get but some of it, as you are about to see, is pretty much exactly the same. So, speaking of the same, here we have the Rush Dungeon, right? So the Rush Dungeon is going to be open right now, and you can, of course, get in here and get all of your goodies from the Exchange Shop, including this newest card set, which is going to be the Fire Psycho Soldier. So as you guys can see right here, this is going to increase attack. It's also going to increase Psycho Soldier Fighter's physical damage by 75%, and increases attack by 22% for 7 seconds when a Psycho Soldier Fighter lands an active skill on a cooldown of 10 seconds. So when it comes to the card set this time around, pretty much standard stuff, we get this awesome pixelated card art, which we always love on any of these cards. It's still my favorite type of art that they do. And really, when it comes to this card set, it is an extremely good budget set. However, with the power creep that has hit these card banners recently, again, if you did not see my Should You Summon video for these new banners, check it out because we talked about the new card set quite a bit there. All of these new EX card sets recently on these banners have been absolutely insane. So I don't really see this as being like a must must have. So this is something going forward with these card sets, if they continue to be like this and the card sets on the actual banners continue to power creep the way that they are, which is at a very accelerated rate, then these guys right here are going to start really lagging behind on that. But they're still going to be amazing, amazing free sets. So if you're not planning on getting those sets or if you didn't get lucky enough to get those sets, then this is going to be very, very helpful for all of your Psycho Soldier characters, particularly the newest banner characters, right? So outside of that, you do get these badges here. So that's something that you can get here, which if you're really wanting to craft that badge that's in the crafting event we're talking about, then that obviously will be beneficial there. And then when it comes to the rest of this, pretty much standard stuff. So overall, very standard rush dungeon, not much else to talk about. Just go ahead and use your new characters or even some of your old characters like I'm doing since I do not actually have any of the new characters and don't plan on going for them. So there is that. So that is pretty much what we got with the rush dungeon, very, very standard. When it comes to the tower, the tower is of course going to be open. Now, of course I can't do anything with it. And I get the feeling a lot of people are going to be in my boat because I know a lot of people are very starved for rubies after the last two banners that we've had being the Tekken 7 collaboration round two. And then if you somehow got away from that with any rubies left, of course, Omega Rugal's event was there to absolutely drain most people in the community, not just of their rubies, but of their IRL money. So right now I get the feeling a lot of people aren't gonna get a chance to play this, which is unfortunate. This time around we did not get a free character to me that is a big knock against this update right i feel like they've started to kind of condition us to free characters being included with these banners and it's very unfortunate we didn't get one with this one so it is what it is you know we shouldn't expect one every time we get one of these updates however it does kind of whenever it's absent show quite a bit in the actual overall fun of the events because like this thing here you can't even do it without one of them but if you have one of the new characters and you're planning on going for them then you will be rewarded it's just one of those situations where i wish that they would really take that into account more often i would have liked to have actually seen that be more of a halloween tower and have some of the halloween fighters be something that we could have used there as well so you know it is what it is so other events here we do have the smash the halloween cake now the smash the halloween cake is only going to be interesting really because of the the fact that it has some really really awesome gameplay to it now i know jaded players out there are going to say oh well tbr it's you know, it's just the same thing we always do except we have to play with a weak ass ghost like what's fun about that it's different right i keep telling you guys these mini games i really like them i think that netmarble should really think about introducing a section called just like the kof all-star arcade or something like that in the game like in a separate section where we can play some of these old mini games like an arcade style thing with just little mini games we can play to kill time if they really want to get engagement in the actual in-game app up, I think that that would be really cool. 
but I love this mini game just because it's so different, it's fun, and honestly, it's not anything too stressful, right? And you don't even have to really play it more than just the one time if you don't want to, because while it does have an event that I'll show you guys real quick, we can take a look at that. There is an event mission here. You can go ahead and pick up some of these uh, extra pumpkins, which will be part of the crafting event for the Halloween tickets. You don't really need to do it. So it's like one of those situations where you could just be like, eh, whatever. So, you know, it is what it is after the first playthrough if you decide to continue to play it every day, but I thought it was fun. So I actually personally enjoyed that. So that's going to be the next one. So now let's move on and talk about the team co-op event. So the team co-op event this time around was much different from the normal, and I actually really kind of like this setup. So the team co-op this time around, you're going to see here that they're going to have the ability to earn individual points, right? And how do you earn individual points? Well, right here, you're going to see that you're going to be able to obtain them through the world drop event that's currently ongoing, which we're about to talk about. That'll net you 50 points for one of those gift item mystery boxes, and then you get Get 100 points for summoning a fighter, including your freeze. So this also is going to include like tokens and things like that. So that's where I got most of my points so far. And then obviously you can also do it with battle cards. So again, that also includes tokens. And as somebody who has been hoarding tokens and told you guys to hoard tokens for so long, you all should have a lot of tokens as well, right? So that would mean that you shouldn't have too much problems getting through these rewards. And the rewards for this thing are actually super good. So if we take a look here, the team points ones, they're okay. They're just a bunch of items. It's not really much of anything that's outrageous but these items do stack up and there's a lot of them at a time so you're actually getting some good value just for pretty much nothing here however this ticket is going to be on here as well that we're going to talk about when we get to the crafting event so there is some value there but really the individual points are where the value is at for me because if you take a look at what you get here you get so much value so overall this is really really good if you're trying to craft in the crafting menu specifically if you need more of these guys and who doesn't in order to get one of those star moonstones so I really do think that this is a cool event, and I don't think it's anything that's that difficult. Now, obviously, the big get here is going to be this BS Fighter Selector, as well as this SS Fighter Selector. If you guys have a specific favorite that you're looking to build or haven't gotten yet, you can use it that way. Otherwise, I would suggest maybe holding on to these and hoarding these since we've been getting so many of them. If you hoard these suckers right now, because there is a good chance that some of these better BS and SS characters are going to get buffed down the road, even though they've gotten a little bit away from that recently. Of course, I do think it'll eventually happen. So if you want to be prepared for that with tickets, you could do that. That's what I've chosen to do with mine. However, you can kind of go either way depending on where you're at and how many you got. But overall, guys, this is a pretty cool event. Now, and then we're going to end up getting these here. So you guys will see team ranking rewards can be earned in the image if... If the individual points are one point or higher, team ranking rewards can be obtained by entering the team event page after calculation once the event ends. So this is really cool too, because you're going to be able to get yourself some more rubies, right? So overall, I am very, very happy with what we've got here. I think that structurally speaking, as long as you're really hitting this thing and you're doing everything you should be, you're getting rewarded pretty darn well. So it's one of those situations where I would honestly say if you want to come off some of your tokens and things for once, you can do that. And that'll be actually a really good idea because this event is very rewarding, specifically in that area. So that is pretty much that. If we want to go ahead and move on now, we can go ahead and talk about some of these little nitty gritty things down here. So let's talk about the gift events. We have two different gift events, right? Now we have a world drop going on right now in order to get these mystery boxes that will include these items. So when it comes to that, we're going to kind of tie those two together. So when it comes to the Popstar versus Popstar gift event, this is your atypical gift event. There really isn't anything here that's too out of the ordinary. If you take a look here, you're going to have these three items. Obviously, the gold one's going to give the most. And you are going to be able to get these rewards depending on where you're at on this bar, right? So there's actually going to be 400, I believe, rubies on here total. And then you're also going to be able to get an SS generic memory for the Athena one. The reason I say that is because there's actually two of these. So if we go ahead and take a look here, there's going to be a Lady Chin one as well. The exact three same items that you would need for Athena. And it's going to have the same bar here for the most part, except you're going to get a BS memory.
So we are getting generic memories. We're going to be getting one of each of them here on top of getting selectors with these events. So this is a really very rewarding event overall, the Halloween event is. I'm really happy with how much stuff we're getting here. Is it perfect? No, but we're getting a lot of bang for our buck here. So when it comes to this world drop event, to get these items, what you need to do is you need to basically just do what you do with any world drop. You need to just take a look here and see if you click on this little fireball, like I always like to tell all the beginners out there, some people don't realize that. If you click the fireball, you're going to be able to see where you can get the gift, the gift item mystery boxes, right? So I would suggest, same as I always suggest for you guys for these, I would suggest going in and going to the battle card dungeon, scrolling down to the final one if you can. And this is what I do right here. I'll show you guys exactly what I do. I haven't done my dailies yet today. We had to, if you guys didn't see my community post, we did not have internet this morning. So that was great. Got up at 6 a.m. on a Saturday for that. So if we do this real quick and take a look. So the battle card dungeon, in my opinion, is the best way to go right now because really the big reason is, oh, nice. Well, that's something. Um, so when it comes to the reason why is because these boxes obviously are going to drop from here, but you also have the ability to potentially, if you get really lucky, end up getting one of the new cards from the new banner. So right now, I think there's a ton of value in grinding on this. You can grind wherever the heck it is that you deem fit. In my opinion, though, right now, being the fact that you can't really do story or epic quest, I think that honestly, that is where I would be grinding no matter what. That's just my opinion. Obviously, do your dailies and stuff, but I would be grinding on the battle card dungeon for these gift events, because once you get those boxes, what will happen is you'll actually go in. We can go ahead and do this real quick. It'll go in here. Where are they? There they are. So you'll get these mystery boxes, right? You'll go ahead. You'll open these up. And then you'll get some of those items, right? So that's where you get those. Like I said, the battle card dungeon, in my opinion, is the route to go. I think that's the best place for you to be grinding right now, specifically also because you are going to be able to get some of those awesome rewards there, like potentially some of those cards from that new card banner that are absolutely must have. So that is pretty much what I think of those two. I like those a lot. I think that the, instead of having like a battle card carnival or a memory carnival or whatever, I like this kind of stuff better. It's more interactive. Honestly, having the world drop tied into it is kind of cool too because it ties into things like the card dungeon that are so pivotal right now if you're trying to get like a piece of the set maybe from the new banner or whatever the case may be just to try and get lucky. A lot of people do that and they get very lucky there. So I like the fact that we can actually kind of like get some added value through doing that because of these events and not just having one of them, but two of them is really, really cool. So we've talked about the team co-op event. We've talked about the gift events. We've talked about all that. Let's talk about the crafting event because there's some stuff in here we need to talk about. When it comes to the crafting event, of course, we're going to be able to get these guys right here. This time around, your exclusive stones for your new banner characters. Your moonstone is going to increase your Psycho Soldier Team Fighter Strike and Blast damage by 15%. And if we go ahead and take a look at the star one here, you have to click on a million things. It's crazy, right? So if we go here, Psycho Soldier Team Fighter's critical rate by 1%. So that's pretty darn good. Obviously, pretty standard fare as well. If you're planning on building these two characters, then you're going to obviously need these. You want these. Like, you actively are going to be building these characters. You're going to be getting these and crafting these. However, when it comes to what else is in here, you do have the badge, and that's going to use these guys here. Like I mentioned earlier, you have some of those in the Rush Dungeon Shop. But you're also going to be able to get these with the pumpkins. So these Halloween fighter selectors are more novelty than they are going to be practical. Let's face it, guys, unless you're trying to do any of the, and there's a finite amount of them, any of the missions that are going to require low cost fighters, gold fighters are just novelty. If you're choosing to play with gold fighters, you're doing it literally because you are on a budget new or you just are doing it for fun. Like you're not doing it because they are practically the best thing that you could be using, right? So any of the gold fighters, unless you absolutely like love one of these fighters or it's something that you need for a low cost mission, maybe that you think will be good. You could go for some of these. Like, honestly, there is a case to be made for that for the low cost missions because you can get some pretty good rewards. Like you go for this Kula, you could go for the Hydern, you could go for even the Shang-Fi. You could go for one of those three. And I think that would be kind of the best options. 
but honestly as far as the gold ones go that's really up to you like i don't i don't recommend any of them really because you're not really going to be using them and speaking of things you're not probably going to be using very often when it comes to the gate crashers chris is still a really good character if you wanted to pick chris up as far as like just a budget character that's cool same with alice she's also a really good little budget character i prefer chris out of the two just in practicality but they're both pretty good and obviously alice is going to fulfill kind of a niche because she is going to have poison on her kit so that's kind of cool when you're at a low level and you're just starting but honestly it's one of those situations where these are going to be kind of just collector's item types things or just like if you're somebody that doesn't have them yet there's really not a reason to use these on anybody in here so it's up to you at the end of the day i don't want to get too deep into the woods on it but it is it's up to you so that's pretty much what you got there like i said not many of those characters you're ever going to use for anything at this point in the game at this point in the game we've gotten to the point where you just pick up one of the newest dx characters you fully invest into them if you decide you just want to go in and blow through all the content you can just do that and you'll be fine like just get that character and you'll be good like they hit like a truck you're doing like fucking 30, 40 billion. So it is what it is. Anyway, moving on. Other things in here. The event codex. If we take a look here. You are going to have the new stones. This one's going to increase physical damage dealt by 30%, which is pretty darn good. Not going to lie, because you can obviously use this on other characters. You're also going to be able to decrease your def the defense by 20% for 5 seconds when an extreme fighter lands an active skill on a cooldown of 10 seconds with the square one, which is eh, all right. And then you have this one here, which increases extreme fighter's blast skill damage by 6%. So that's going to be your hexagon stone. In my opinion, this guy right here, MVP of the three, and then you got this guy here, very good, but this guy in the middle is just kind of there, because really this is not that impressive on much of any character. It's kind of like one of those ones that you put on like your other characters that aren't good enough to get like your top stones, like your best cream of the crop stones. All you veterans know what I'm talking about. So you just throw the other stones you have left onto other characters that weren't good enough to get those. That's how that be sometimes. So when it comes to these other things in here, you obviously are going to be get more of these guys right here that you'll need to get your star and your moonstone to build up your for your stone crafting event. And then you've got this prime memory shard here so you can continue to build your Athena after you've over invested. Same with the lady chin, all the rewards are the same. That's pretty much what you got there for the codex. So outside of that, I think that that covers most all of the events, right? But we have more, but wait, there's more. So if we go in here, go to the check and log, Halloween Witch's login bonus, you're going to notice you're going to get more stuff for the crafting event largely. That's what we've got here. The rest of this stuff is pretty much just stuff. So I wouldn't necessarily say it's anything that's going to be that crazy. We do get 400 AP though. That's pretty nice. But outside of that, it's mainly going to be there for the crafting event. But it's nice that we get some purple hammers, some gold hammers. So that's kind of cool too. So that's what we got with the check-in log. When it comes to the battle passes, all of this stuff is the same as what we normally get. I apologize for not going through it individually, but I'm going to be honest. I don't feel like I need to reiterate the same thing over and over and over again when they're going to be pretty much exactly identical. So honestly, if you have $50 to throw at the game and you're a huge Athena or Lady Chin fan and you're planning on going in on the banner anyway and spending money anyway, this is a great value. However, it's very steep. So that's going to be just for like super fans. And then you're going to have the $5 one, which is a lot easier to stomach. This will get you a multi a piece on those banners. I will pick this one up just because I always pick up the $5 one and these tokens for a multi. At least I get one for the actual the card summons and the fighters because that'll help me to maybe get a piece of the set so I can get the card set because I am going to be going for the card set. I'm skipping the fighters. And hey, maybe I'll get lucky with that one multi and get a fighter since I'm skipping them and maybe just end up at least getting a copy of one of them. That would be kind of cool, but odds are very low that that will happen. So that's pretty much what we got there. Obviously, you get a BS and SS selector for the $50 one for the final reward, and you're going to be getting the rest of your tokens for the $5 one at the end. So I always hate that. I wish those were at the beginning, but it is what it is. It's like they're punishing you. Like on this one, on the $50 one, you're going to notice the first rewards here. Like they're right there because I know that you're wanting to summon, but on this one, they make you suffer through it. So that's always funny to me. So other things in here, guys, I do need to talk about the secret shop. We do have a Halloween special shop here. So this is going to be effectively 8,000 rubies for a card set, right? Now, if we take a look here, 
it is going to be a good card set for certain things in particular, but it's not going to be must-have, right? So this increases attack by 14%, increases power charge rate by 50% for 7 seconds when tagging in. Other team members obtain 20% power when tagging out. This increases active skill damage by 4.4% at base. And a quick edit. So I forgot to mention the fact that while the first card, as I do mention in the video, does increase your active skill damage, the second card in this set is going to decrease your base ultimate move skill cooldowns. And then on the third piece, you're actually going to be decreasing your tag cooldowns. So that is worth mentioning again, because this is, of course, going to be a very good time attack set because of all of these different things so again it is a good time attack set i don't think it's the best time attack set and really adding that in here does not change my overall opinion of the set i still think that it's overpriced for what it is and you're better off going for that new ex set on the card banner because it's so good but hey if you've got the rubies to throw at it go for it. But in order to be fair to this card set, I figured I needed to go ahead and do this real quick. So let's just go ahead and get back to our regularly scheduled programming. And when it comes to this card set, I think this is a very good card set specifically for things like, you know, if you're playing in time attack, this is going to be a good card set, right? However, I don't really think this is a must have. I think 8,000 rubies is pretty steep. However, you do get other items. Like, it's not a bad set. If you look at it, it's kind of like what we had when we had the Lady uh, Choi event when we had her set, right? Her set was kind of like this. It was another time attack set, which I said at the time, if you need time attack sets, if you've missed out on a lot of the collaboration ones, get these sets because you need to be able to use a very, very strong time attack set in time attack you need a good a good set now there are good budget ones out there that you can get just normally but i'm gonna tell you guys right now this is much better than just kind of getting a normal one so there is value there right it's just the problem is it's eight thousand rubies and we've come off all the things we've come off of and when it comes to the items we're getting here that's my phone um there's a lot of things here but it isn't necessarily eight thousand rubies worth to me I don't really necessarily like the idea of going for any of this for me personally. So I would say not to do this and just focus on getting the card set from the banner first and seeing what you have left maybe, because the card set from the banner is that good. And this 8,000 rubies could be going towards that because that's almost an entire pity. So to me, it's pretty steep. It's a good set for time attack for maybe other things too. I mean, you obviously can use it other places, but that's really the first place you're thinking of. I don't know, it's all right. I wouldn't say 8,000 rubies is really worth that, but I could be wrong. It's up to you. Beauty's in the eye of the beholder, right? So at the end of the day, you guys, I think that that's basically going to cover what we had with this update. Um, overall, guys, I think that this was a strong, strong update. I think that there are certain things that they missed the boat on. I think that what would have really put it over the top is if we would have gotten a free character. So that way that you could be able to play the tower as a free to play player or a player that is skipping. Because it always sucks that they force you to pull the character to play content. I've never liked that. And I've always said that. I just don't like the idea of having to like force you to actually invest to play. I think that that's kind of... Mm, I don't know, not my thing. But anyway, when it comes to this event, I think there's a ton of rewards. Like there's probably rewards in here that I've, I've missed. Like we didn't even talk about the fact that this update also brought along with it stuff unrelated to the actual Halloween stuff. Like if we actually go into Tower of Trials right now, Tower of Trials, and I need to actually do this now because I have not been, I have not even had a chance to sit down and look at this really the past few days. But if you take a look here, guys, you can go up to level 120 now, and there are some pretty cool rewards in here. So we didn't even really get a chance to talk about some of this stuff that's unrelated to the actual Halloween events. But overall, this was a really, really good event, and I'm very excited to see where things go now that we are going to be getting that actual game update in November that's going to be helping to boast, bolster the engine a little bit. I'm wondering just how much we're going to be getting at the end of the year. We are, of course, going to have a new collaboration in December, and so it's going to be a situation where we're going to have quite a bit to look forward to. However, I am very, very... I don't know. I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic because I don't want to get too excited because I feel like this is a major step up as far as the amount of content here 
from a normal update. So I'm kind of happy with this. I'm kind of happy with it in a lot of ways. There's a lot of things about it that could piss you off if you really want to focus on them. But I think that as an update, this is a solid one. So you guys can let me know in the comment section down below what you think. I think that this is a pretty solid update personally, but I also admit that there are some major things that are kind of missing there. Some things that are kind of goofy, but for, I mean, it's Lady Chin. Like, what, what can you expect? We got a lot better than what I could have expected from that. And it's for a Halloween event, I think a pretty good one. So anyway, you guys, let me know in the comment section down below what you think of all this. Like, share, and subscribe on your way out. I appreciate all of you for watching. Until the next one, you all take care. Happy Halloween. Peace. Continue.